something that you might learn at a regular college, right? I mean, you the job's over when it's done. You know, we go home when it's done. Jimmy, we've had a uh, coach from Citadel on and a coach from VMI on, and they both spoke about how those schools and those programs are about building leaders. Those You go to those schools, you become a leader. You were in a leadership position, CrossFit, president of Go Rock, captain in the Marines. Did you feel like after your time at the Naval Academy with that workload, kind of managing those crazy hours on a regular basis that you were set up to be nothing but a leader? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's, you said it. And they, I agree with those coaches is that is what they're doing. Like, it's great if you win a national championship and that helps. And it's obviously a, a you know, a fruit of the work that you've, you've done, but you know, at the end of the day, they want to graduate commissioned officers to go out and lead, you know, um, in our defense forces. Right. And I certainly believe that the things that I learned at the academy, all good and you know, or the good things and the bad things were definitely tools for the toolkit on on leadership. And that's from, you know, you work to the job's done. I mean, that's that's one of those things that it's not necessarily um, something that you might learn at a regular college. Right. I mean, you the job's over when it's done. You know, we go home when it's done. That's something that, you know, you learn, you learn prioritization, you learn hardship, you learn, you learn failure, you learn like, you know, you might have a, you might have an A in your economics class, but if you've got a D in your calculus class and you have two hours of homework each, like you probably should take, and you only have two hours, you should probably take those two hours and do your calculus homework, you know, like, and you're just going to have to eat it on the other side, right? Like, you just really uh, just understanding yourself, understanding others. I mean, and the academies do a, a decent job at making you understand what it's like to be a follower in the beginning and a leader later, right? Because I, I do firmly believe that in order to be a great leader, you really need to know how to follow. You need to first understand what it's like to look up to somebody and to listen to them and see the good things they're doing and 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 the bad things too. Right. And for me, I just kind of always been like, Oh, I like that. I put that in my quiver and I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave that out of my quiver. Right. And I've been around some really phenomenal people um, that end up being like it turned out, you know, end up being heroes. I mean, will go down forever as heroes. Doug Zembeck is a great example. Doug Zembeck wrestler, uh, Marine, Marine Force Recon guy, uh, named, nicknamed Lion of Fallujah. He used to come in the room all the time at Navy and he'd just be like, just come in. Like, first time I saw him, I'm like, who is this guy? Like, he just comes in. He's like, you know, fully charged battery, just like, wow, <laughs> you know, here we go. Let's go big up the density or whatever. And like, I'm just like, okay. And then he'd come in again and he'd, I mean, he'd leave it all out there, right? And we're all, cutting weight and, you know, stitches over our eyes and all this stuff. I'm like, whatever, man. But Doug ended up getting killed in action, but he's gone down in like, as one of the greatest Marine warriors and leaders of um, this whole global war on terrorism. Look him up. Doug Zembeck, Lion of Fallujah. But like, these are the kind of people you're around, right? And like, you know, you hear all the, the sayings and the cliche kind of statements on iron sharpens iron and all that stuff, but it's true. It's certainly true. And, you know, I think that I had a masterclass uh, opportunity to be in the wrestling room with warriors that are intelligent and humble and guys that wanted to serve the country. And turns out that guys that, may have gone in so that they could travel the world and do cool job and see how it goes. But the towers hit in 2001 and we were all, you know, going into whatever year. And it turned out that like for the follow on 20 years, these are the people that were out like, you know, defending freedom around the world. Right. And uh, it's pretty special, pretty special. So, 
quick answer to your question, Jimmy. Yes. 